Oh, hi there, everyone. Welcome to another Cardwell's Cauldrons here at Geektopia Island. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. Today, we're doing a little something different that I don't usually do, and that's good old control. Grixis control, actually, so we're off color pie of the lands, but who cares? Let's just do it, right? But before we do, I'm going to remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to support us, and we would be very much for it. The link will be down below. Today, we're going to be showing off Grixis control of... Let's not. Let's just... No. No thanks. Let's not do that, okay? Uh, I've been playing around with this, and it seems super solid, and it's, it has a lot of artifacts in it, too, but we'll get into why that is for sure. The first uh, good old boy we're going to show is Stone Coil Serpent. You should know this guy by now. He's amazing. He X cost 0 0. He has reach, trample, and protection for multicolored, so all the Teferis can get out of here. Stone uh, Serpent enters the battlefield with X wall encounters on it. That's okay. Because once you have a bunch of land and he's like a 9-9 trample, you, that's fine. You win. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is Fibbibib, the Lost. He's the little homunculus that could, and he is a blue and one for 1-1. One, one. And whenever he enters the battlefield, you draw a card. If this entered from the library or was cast from your library, draw two cards instead. And then when he becomes the target of a spell, shuffle him into its owner's library. Yep. So he's hard to kill, and he just draws you lots of cards. Simple as that. <clears throat> the next one is Solemn Salacrum. He's a classic old dude, a 4 drop 2-2, two, two, but in his the battlefield, search your library for a basic land card and put it in the field tapped, which is, it feels so good to do it. And then when he dies, you draw a card. So, yeah. Yeah. That's... Good old Sad Robot's back, and he's going to be a staple in a lot of decks just because he's that strong. Exactly. Uh, next up is Expansion Explosion, and Expansion is uh, red, blue, red, blue hybrids. And instant copy target instant or sorcerer with full convert mana cost four or less, you may choose new copies for it. Or explosion, which is two blue, two red, and X as an instant, does X damage to any target, uh, target player draws X cards. Yep. So you're like, cool, you can take six, I'll draw six. So like if you're Thanks. running red blue, you should just always have this, even if you're just using expansion. Because copying a, a cheap kill spell is amazing. It, it is a really strong card, and if you get late game, then you can just kill them. Exactly. Now this one. Is the cornerstone of the deck, and I think it's a sleeper hit card that no one's really playing with right now. But it's Maze Mine Tome. It's a two drop artifact. Uh, tap, put a page counter on Maze Mine, scry one. Uh, two tap, uh, put a page counter on the Tome, draw a card, which is pretty awesome. And once you hit uh, four page counters, well, yeah, four or more page counters, exile it. And once you do that, you gain four life, which is actually very useful against the aggro decks or even mid range too. When they're just pummeling and you gain four life and then you draw the card that you need. It's super powerful, it's super awesome, and I would consider just running it in most control decks nowadays, for sure. Uh, next up is Thought Erasure. It is a blue and a black for a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non land card from it, they discard that card, and then you surveil one. And it, this card's really good just because it gives you knowledge of their deck and it gets rid of a card. Yep. And it helps you dig. Exactly. Like... Turn two, playing against this on turn two just immediately annoys me for the rest of the game. It's just that powerful. Mm -hmm. Of course, Tyrant Scorn, it's a blue and a black instant. Choose one. Destroy target creature with converted mana cost three or less, or return target creature to its owner's hand. And that's really what you need for a tempo like control deck for sure. Next up is Bedevil, one of our staple favorite kill yeah. spells. Two black and a red for an instant. Destroy target artifact creature or planeswalker. Because it kills the main three pesky things that you need to deal with right now. Yeah, uh, th that's really what it's for. Just yeah. kill your dude. Just, just get it out of there. Next one is Ionize. It's one blue and a red. Instant. Counter target spell. Ionize deals two damage to that spell's controller. A lot of people have forgotten about this card when I was playing. And I realized that people, when you're doing the mana war thing, you know, pass turn, pass turn, people are getting extra mana to like, because you think they're going to counter it and they'll just pay three or four. No, just straight up counter your spell. And I don't think they know how to deal with that, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, next is Roll Reversal. It is two blue and a red for a sorcery. Exchange control of two target permanents that share a permanent type. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why this is here, Carl. You're going to have to explain that. Well, one. hopefully, I guess the next card, yes, will show us. Uh, Sahili, Sublime Artificer. One, uh, and then two, is it hybrids? It's a five drop loyalty planeswalker. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, create a 1 1 servo artifact creature token. And then minus two, uh, target artifact you control becomes a copy of another target. Artifact or creature you control until in the turn, except that it's artifact. So basically, what happens is you cast all these spells, you have a lot of servos, or even like uh, you're a 
Slockroom or the other creature, and you're just like, oh, my 1-1 one, one Servo, I want your big dude. Thanks. For 3 mana, just to be able to do that. Or, a fun thing that I did was they had a Narset and it had a Sahili at 1, and I just traded those two. Because I was like, thanks for your Narset. I really needed the Jeskai Planeswalker in my deck right now. <laughs> so it's kind of weird, like, you just throw out these tiny dudes and you just grab whatever the big stuff. Because you're just controlling the board. You don't really care at the moment. Alright, I, I like it, I like yeah. it. Next is Rao, the Storm's Conduit. He is a red, blue, and two for a four drop, or a four loyalty. Um, whenever you cast a co or copy an instant or sorcery spell, he deals one damage to target opponent or Planeswalker. Plus two, scry one, and then minus two when you cast your next instant or sorcery of the spell. You're this turn, copy it, you may choose new copies. So you have multiple ways to copy spells, just to be like, hey, let's copy the devil. And if you have the other thing, then you get to copy it three times. Yeah. Or exactly. twice, and it's kind of ridiculous. It's just, it just kind of just keeps going up. The four drop slot is a little slow, and so that's why I placed them on here. And then the fact that, yeah, uh, Boot Devil twice or Thought Razor twice to get their hand. Because by turn five, they're going to be like, oh, I have this massive combo I'm going off. And you're like, no, get it out of there. Yeah. No. Especially Ram decks. You need to get you need to get stuff out of there quickly. And to help with that is Nucobolus, Dragon God. Remember him? Yeah. He's a blue, black, 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 red. Uh, four loyalty planeswalker. He has all loyalty abilities of all other planeswalkers on the battlefield, which is kind of useful in a little bit. So if you plus one, you may draw a card. Each opponent exiles a card from their hand or permanent they control. So if you already got rid of their hand, then lands are going away. Minus three, destroy target creature or planeswalker. You know, it helps. Minus eight, each opponent who doesn't have a legendary creature or planeswalker loses the game. So hopefully you can get there and just win the game with that. He's super strong. Yeah. Uh, next up is Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge. It is a blue, black, and four for a five loyalty walker. Uh, creatures and plant stalker spells you cast have affinity for artifacts. Plus two, he deals X damage to each opponent where X is the number of artifacts you control and you gain X life. Yeah. And minus three, return target artifact from graveyard to your hand. Or minus eight, exile the top ten of your library, put all artifact cards from among them into the battlefield. You're most likely not going to do that one. Nope. Because it's not worth it compared to the others. But... It could be there. It, it could be if you really, really had to. Yeah. So with Sahili's servos or all your other artifact creatures, this makes all your other spells super cheap. And the fact that, I don't know, <clears throat> it, it super helps out. And then you can plus two on here. And if you have another bolus, you can also plus two and do extra like double damage and gain double life with all artifacts. It feels really weird how all this like stuff comes together, but it just does. <laughs> Somehow when I was playing with it, it's just solid and super fun. And uh, with that, that will just get us to the lands, which is, uh, of course, we have Blood Crypt. Uh, we have Fable Passage to grab the whatever basics that we have left. And I've only used them two Fables just to get there. Uh, Steam Vents, and then uh, also the Water Graves, the, all the Shock Lands of such. And of course, we have the basics of the Island, Mountain, Swamp, just to get there. Uh, with that, I realize I do enjoy just all four Shock Lands, and then two Fables, and the rest are Basic Lands. Especially with uh, Salacrum, you're just getting... Yeah, because Set Robot's back in play, so you're going to want to play as many basics as you can, just because yeah. he gets you free basics. And it's just super awesome to do that. Now, of course, we don't have Sideboard anymore because of the, the meta sorts and can be switched, but we do have Honorable Mentions, and it's really hilarious to me, but not to anyone else. But this is the reason why I built the deck, and I took him out. Because I didn't know if he would be super worth it. But that's why we have him on all mentions. <laughs> to put him inside board if need be. But it's Kaisel Freebooter. He's, he's one of my returning favorite cards. From Exelon I do believe. It's a 1 in a black. 1-2 flying. Enters the battlefield. Target opponent reveals their hand. Choose a non-creature. Non-land from it. Exile it until he leaves the battlefield. So. Just to be like. Turn 2. I steal your thing. Thanks. That's that's really it. He, he's pretty strong. Yeah. Just because he... He does a lot more than you think he does because yeah. he gets rid of the one card you wanted or whatever early or he gets rid of that kill spell and then it just kind of sits there and you're like i need to kill that dude and you, you it just sucks because sometimes you have to waste a spell to get your one spell back yeah exactly especially if you go turn two oh let me grab your counter spell thank you or your yeah. teferi like what are you gonna do waste a kill spell on this guy while i play another big dude you're gonna mess with that or a planeswalker so yeah very powerful very uh it's a mind game with this guy for mm -hmm. sure with that, hopefully you enjoyed the deck overall, and the list will be down below. Hopefully you enjoy your stay here at Geektopia Island. Goodbye. Later.
Also guys, I just remind y'all to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and if you want to keep up to date on all our future content, make sure you click that bell. It'll give you all the notifications you need. With that, we'd like to go ahead and give a big thank you to all our fans that support us through the year, and especially our Patreon support people. Uh, we do like to give a shout out to our Mythic and Above uh, supporters, and that would be Dwayne Higgs. Thank, thank you very you much. much. We love you.